Alright, I'm back. Did you miss me? Alright, this is part two leather making um, from Ian Wilson, which is a lot of what I don't know, as I said in the first video. Um, so yeah, part two of um, three or four, probably three. Burnishing, that's the next thing. Yeah, I keep looking over at my notes there over here on this other monitor. Um, burnishing is very important. Um, it makes the leather more durable, stronger, lasts longer, looks better. Um, and it's uh, very easy to do, but time consuming and tedious. Um, so I've got, it again, this is going to be hard to see on a webcam, but I've got this piece here that is burnished, and you might be able to see there's a nice sheen to it, and you can see the, the grain, and it looks deep. It's a very pretty look. Um, this is unburnished. Flatter looking, like flat paint. Um, doesn't have a sheen to it. Can't quite make out the pattern. Um, these two are the exact same, exact same cuts. Same animal, same part of the animal. Um, one thing I, you can't see over the webcam, you can feel, this feels spongier, softer, um, this, this has a, a little bit slicker finish to it. Um, and why you want to burnish, um, what you're doing, basically what you're doing is you're taking the pores, um, and sealing them, you're, you're compressing the, I guess, would be the pores that are left, um, because this is skin, after all. Um, and when, as you do that, you know, it, it makes, it seals it up, makes it harder. Um, you know, I think I said that already. Uh, best way to do it is um, with what's traditionally called a bone, and it used to be made out of bone. Um, and it, the shapes usually look like a tongue depressor. Now, grand, grand, I'm speaking from my um, historical references, um, colonial America, um, mid-Atlantic region, that kind of stuff. Um, which probably carried over from Europe and had some Native American influence at any rate. Um, the bones that sell at Tandy Leather now are made out of nylon. Um, I don't like them. Um, they, the nylon can scratch the leather and it, they don't seem hard enough in my opinion and they're not made well enough. Um, you can't get ivory anymore which would be ideal. Um, it's illegal to get and real bone uh, it's gonna be it can be tricky on what you actually use. Um, the bones of animals that you can get easily may not be as strong as you think. They could, or they're only strong in one direction, and they can splinter. Uh, the knee bone of a deer actually works really well um, if you can get a hold of that. But I also prefer um, deer antler. Um, it's actually quite ideal um, for for a bone like tool. And I have a piece here. This piece has been cut, kind of polished, um, to make it nice and comfortable. And in fact, here's the business end that I use. Um, in fact, that's actually it's almost kind of naturally ergonomic. Um, I can grip it like this. I've got a good hold on it here, and I've got this edge here, um, and a nice point here. The rounded edge I use for burnishing, and then up here the sharper edge. You can make decorative marks. Um, in the leather. Now, main key to burnishing, um, leather becomes very receptive to what you do to it when it's wet. Um, you don't want to get it too wet and you don't want to get it wet enough. Um, how much you do, experience. Um, that's the best way to learn. Obviously you don't want it dripping wet when you can wring it out and you got water pouring everywhere, but then you don't want to just, you know, that, that's not going to be enough water. Um, and you will notice a change. So this is perfectly Alright, that's a, an abrasion from the machining when it was made. Alright, so here, perfectly dry piece of leather. Um, I'm going to just dip my finger a little bit in water here. You can instantly see it just turns dark. Um, and this amount of water is actually not enough to burnish. Um, but I just do want to show you so there's no surprises that the leather quickly changes color when it's wet. So you can tell where you have gotten it wet. Um, and hey, that's more cat fighting you might be hearing in the background. Um, they love each other. They they really do. The already I can already tell this is starting to dry. Um, I don't feel any wet, even though you can still see it. Um, what I like to do is keep a washcloth um, and just a little ramekin, shot glass, whatever. You don't need a lot of water. Um, wet the area that you want to burnish. Um, get to the right level of wetness, and then you start working away with the tool. Now you need a good hard surface to work on. And the best, most ideal surface, piece of marble. Um, you can buy a slab of marble at Tandy Leather. They will sell it to you for an arm and a leg. Um, and to be fair, they probably charge a lot because it's really heavy. And 
probably costs a lot to ship. Um, I got this for free. Um, best way to do that is find one of those custom counter shops and they usually have scraps of this stuff. Um, so this was supposed to be part of somebody's kitchen counter in a really nice home and the scrap that remains I got. So you've got this nice polished perfectly smooth surface probably good for making fudge and also really good for making leather. Um, it's essentially like an anvil. It's nice and heavy, it's flat and it's smooth, but unlike an anvil, it's more portable and has a bigger surface area on it. Um, you don't want to use wood. Wood is not hard enough. Um, you don't want to use concrete. It's going to be too rough unless you've got a polished block of concrete, but you might as well just get this. Um, you need something incredibly hard because you want all of the energy that you are pushing into the leather needs to be reflected right back. You don't want to waste any of it. So got your piece of leather on your piece of marble, and I'm not going to hold it in front of the camera, um, and you wet the surface of the leather and you just start rubbing away. And I highly recommend circular motions because that way you can even out what you're doing. If you, It's very tempting to want to go back and forth and you're going to you're gonna get a stripe effect. It looks the way, you know, a carpet looks after you vacuum it. You can see the stripes. <coughs> you don't want that on the leather. And so as you do circular motion, you can make sure you do an even application. Because when you swirl around, you can make sure you can cover over those places you might have not done yet. Um, you can't really overdo it. Um, but you can also get, you'll get tired. And in fact, if you get tired, you're doing it right. Um, you do want to push down with pressure to where but again, this is like the amount of water you use. It's it's going to take experience to get this right. Um, but it's not that difficult to pick it up. You'll get the zen of it. If you're pushing down too light, if you're not getting tired, you're pushing down too light. And if you're pushing down to where, you know, you're doing this enough and you start to get fatigued after, you know, a few minutes, then you're probably doing it right. Um, you don't want to try to push down so hard with the force of the gods. You're not trying to bring the cow back to life. So... You're not, this is, you don't need to be dripping in sweat and, and trembling from fatigue, so it's not that hard. Um, you know, but it's just, you know, one of those things, it's a nice methodical thing to do while you're, you know, watching TV or zoning out or, you know, listening to Vivaldi. Um, and as with, you know, I like to burnish my whole area first and then cut out my patterns. Um, just makes it easier to work that way. And I kind of work in, <clears throat> you know, if you wet too much of an area, that the areas that you haven't gotten to yet are going to dry out. Um, before you can burnish them, so I tend to work in zones about like this, you know, um, you know size of you know, half my face. Um, you'll get comfortable with it, you know, it just all depends on your style. Um, you know, so if, uh, get a piece of antler if you can. You can use the bone nylons, uh, the nylon style bones at Tandy Leather, but I think antler works the best. Um, the next thing, so the little point on the end here, um, that's for doing decorative stuff. And a good example of that, so this is a replica of a, an attorney's folio from 200 years ago found in the mid-Atlantic region. Um, these grooves in here are just merely decorative. Um, in fact, this, the, there's a groove along the back here too. Not just decorative, it actually helps to line up the stitching, so I guess it's mildly utilitarian. Um, just like before, you know, you, you wet it after you burnished, um, you got your marble use a straight edge and just the point of the bone or the point of your antler just run that groove in there you may have to do it more than once um, because the leather is wet it, it will receive that that force and make that groove and then when it dries it, it stays like that um, the same for folding this 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 fold here seems permanent all it is I wet this really good folded this over let it sit overnight came back and kept this shape um, and another thing you can do while it's wet, um, you can, there's these little, you know, you've got a, a punch, um, and you can put these little guys on the end. You can get, you know, every letter of the alphabet um, patterns like this. So, you know, you set this down, thwack it with a hammer, it'll leave the negative of this impression in the leather. Um, you may, <laughs> you definitely want to do that right the first time. Um, it's very tempting if you don't hit it hard enough, or you hit it off at an angle, to go back and do it again. And what ends up happening is you'll get a ghost of the image because you can't get it quite back perfect again. So hit it with confidence, hit it right. Um, you can use, you know, you can use your standard framing hammer. I actually don't recommend it. It's a little too clumsy. Um, you want something that's more designed for like chiseling, chisel work. So this is a good mallet that's used for chiseling. Um, 
much more ideal for um, using this type of thing here. Um, and patterns on belts, that's actually made with a machine that has rollers that can roll out the pattern. And <clears throat> you, know, you also want to use this for punching out holes in leather, which we'll get to that in the next section. So hope to see you back. Thanks.